All right, Jesse's got two blades quenched. It went perfectly. There were no warps in either blade. Four-time champion Jesse ups to forge a pair of Pugio daggers, a decision that the judges find to be exciting. You want to pick the weapon, or do you want to pick the forge welding technique? I want the weapon. I'm thinking the pair of Pugio daggers. Holy cow. John, what forge welding technique do you want to use? Let's go with canister, and we're going to have to use some bicycle chain in it. Because this is my fifth battle, I'm definitely a little bit tired. I've hit that bottom plateau in terms of energy, and the only way I can go is up. I think my canister is up to temperature now. I think it's the perfect time to bring him over to the squaring dies and start setting those welds. It's time for Le Quench. So I decided to do one at a time. Oh, we got a quench. All right, Jesse's got two blades quenched. It went perfectly. I slap on a fresh 36 grit and just start going ham. But there's still a few things that I need to do in this round, include finish shaping the handle and then sharpening it. I'm going to forge the two knives out of one billet, and I'm going to stretch out the tang in the middle and then I'll cut those in two. Out of the oil, it looks good. I think I've got what I want. That's gonna work. That's not great. The second blade, I notice a key lamp on the edge. Now I'm just gonna work that out. I now have to assemble these two handles. It is gonna be a big challenge all the way around. Everything seems to be just right, but I glance and I'm, I'm seeing I've, I've used up better than an hour, so I know I've gotta keep moving on. What John's doing is a great idea, but it's very, very time consuming. It's not an easy process. It looks like a potato on a stick. Um, it doesn't look great. And I need to get this shaped into something that is functional. I get it etched. I'm racing the clock right now. And I don't have time to make mistakes today. Boys, Mr. Driving Machines, put down your tools. This battle is over. Pugio Dag is finished. Now it's time for the tests. The first is for the strength. Let's see who will have the best. Jesse, you're up first. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. Uh, your blades look great. I like the symmetry on these. I mean, they look like a matched pair. Everything's tight, everything's smooth. The biggest issue I have is the handles. They have no grip to them whatsoever. Enough so with one of the chops, I actually caught a knuckle. Otherwise, great job. Thank you. It's always fun being the second guy, right, Sure. John? Why not? The biggest problem I have, the contouring you have on there is basically the exact opposite of what I said about Jesse's. They're not sliding anywhere, but they're not comfortable at all. Edges survived. Good job. Thank you. This is the sharpness test, the banner slice. Jesse, you up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. That's a beautiful match set. They're quite identical, very close to that. Now your edge, your edge is cut nicely. John, your turn, so you ready? Yes, sir. Your edges are sharp, it's just that it's got a grind here that's not razor sharp. So when cutting with this, there are some areas in this where it just got snagged with the blade. You will cut. Thank you. Overall, the two tests went pretty well for both Baldersmiths, but let's see who is going to win the competition. Only one of you can come out of here on top with the title of Gladiator of the Forge. Our judges have discussed your blades and they made a final decision. Today's Gladiator of the Forge is Jesse. You have done it again. That is five total wins. John, there's no question you're talented. I know you had your competitor here worried for a little bit. Unfortunately, you didn't come out on top today. At this point, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Jesse, you are a five-time champion. You got another check for five grand and a bonus of $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. I have five titles. I'm not ready to give up this seat anytime soon. In the fifth battle of the Gladiator of the Forge competition, the Bladesmiths face off in an epic challenge, going head to head. Jesse, weapon or forge one technique? I want the weapon. You know how this works. What are you thinking? The Sika sword. Now, Eric, because Jesse got to pick the weapon, that leaves you with the forge welding technique. What are you thinking? Ladder pattern Damascus. I'm going with the 120 layer ladder pattern Damascus because I'm comfortable with Damascus and I'm hoping that the high layer count might trip up my younger opponent. Your time starts now. 120 layers, man. Why? That is a big billet. Once I'm certain that my welds are set, I get ready to draw out my billet. 
I'm pressing my billet down on the press, and it seems my welds were perfect. Oh, oh Jess, you're putting the, the band, band in, in on the anvil. Now that I've got my blade forged completely to shape, I get ready to heat treat my blade. This is quenched. Nice. I sharpen it as best I can, and it's time to move on to the handle. My plan for the mechanical connection is to put two pins, one through the actual handle block and one through the pommel. I'm gonna make a weld bead so big it acts as a nut, so that the pommel can't physically slide off. So I'm starting with 14 layers of 15 and 20 and 1095. Welding! Just causing more work for Eric because he's gonna have to stretch out that steel further, stack it more. I get my second restack done. It's time to throw it in the oil. There it is. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm ecstatic. And then I realize I've still got to do all of my handle work. It ain't pretty, but it'll work. <laughs> it goes through no problem, and I am so relieved. Now for Eric, it's time to put an edge on the blade. I get that curve as sharp as I can get it. Hopefully, it's sharp enough to cut something, but I suppose we're gonna find out. Oh my god. Shut up, the machines! Put down your tools! This battle's officially over! Time for the strength test. Strength test. The chariot wheel chop. Jesse, you're up first. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. <clears throat> no edge damage. Everything's still straight. So, all in all, nice job. Thank you. All right, Eric, you ready to go? <clears throat> Yeah, I am not 100% confident whether or not the blade is gonna hold up in the strength test. All right, breathe there. You survived, man. Nice job on the blade. My biggest issue is the handle that split on you. It's still straight and still got an edge, good job. Welcome to the sharpest test, the tube size. Just here first. You ready for this? Yep. All right, Jesse, let's talk about your Sika story here. First stop, nice profile with your blade. And overall, sir, you will cut. Eric, your turn, sir. You ready? Cut him clean. It's a nice balance you have with your weapon here. In this area, it's just not sharp. And overall, well, it'll cut a little bit. In eight hours, you both took stacks of steel, turned them into 120 layer. Only one of you could come out on top of this battle today, earning a check for $5,000 and the title of Gladiator of the Forge. Jesse, you've done it again. Congratulations. Hi, Eric. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Wait, Go get him, man. Go get him. This experience does make me want to learn a bit more about some of the Roman weapons. Jesse, that's three up and three down. Now you have $15,000. Still the reigning gladiator of the forge. That's my third win in a row, and that's $15,000. I want to go all the way to the end. In this episode from season nine, Jesse is on track to accumulate a total of $50,000 if he maintains his winning streak. Bladesmiths, welcome to the forge. Jesse, you've tallied up a total of $40,000. Eric, if you came out on top, that's your first Gladiator of the Forge win, and you'll get a $5,000 check. You're going to be building this. The Akinases. Now, if you look in the pantry, you'll see we have stacks of 1095 and 15 and 20 high carbon steel bars. We want you to take that steel and turn it into at least a 100-layer twisted Damascus billet from which you will make your blades. I always have the tendency to pick too much material at the beginning. So I set four layers off to the side. So now that my billet is drawn out, come on. I need to get this thing cut into five pieces. OK, let's see how well this works. Step on the plate, stand on those. You're helping to anchor it, and you got better leverage. It. Good enough for me. If this quench fails, it could send me home and end my wind streak. The blade looks great. There's no cracks. Things have been going great in this round so far. So now I need to make an anthropomorphic handle. My blade looks menacing. It looks terrifyingly sharp. The grind lines are pretty much perfect. I'm going to use 22 pieces, draw it out, split it into five pieces, restack it and draw it again. That'll put me at 110 layers. Oh, yeah. Everything on my steel looks good. It's time to throw it in the oil. I got a good solid blade here. Some days I even amaze myself. My sword has gotten a lot lighter. Now it's time to get this handle glued up. 
I couldn't be happier with the way this blade's turning out. Vicefist, put down your tools, this round is over! Now it's time for the strength test, and this time they have to choose who is going to go first. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Eric, hey, Eric, you wanna go first? Let's do it, bud. <laughs> All right, first of all, there's no deflection, deformation. It came out nice, did a good job. The one complaint I have is there is a ton of weight on here. Controlling that during chops, it rolled over on me a couple times. All right, Jesse, you're up, you ready to go? Hey, no. The edge is fine, everything's still tight and true. Good job. For the sharpness test, Doug is going to take the weapons and try to cut through the ropes. Eric, you're first. You ready for this? Let's do it, Doug. All right, let's do it. You have a sharp edge, but there is a weight to your weapon that makes it hard to hold on to overall. You will cut. Jesse, your turn. You ready? Sure. First up, your edge, cut most of the rope except for the last one, but I cut a different angle, so I'll call that on me. Overall, you will cut. Our judges did make a final decision. Gentlemen, the gladiator of the forge today is... Jesse, congratulations, you did it again, man. Jesse, that is seven battles and seven victories. You just won another check for $5,000. Well done. What just happened? I'm somehow the seven-time gladiator of the forge. I can't imagine a scenario in which it'll be closer for the next battle. I never expected to be fighting for the last five grand to 50 grand, but I'm going to keep my place on the throne. This is the first episode where we see Jesse on this program. Let's see how he does. We need to find out what blade from our ever-changing Wall of Roman gladiator weapons you guys will both be building today. I'm thinking the Copus. I end up starting with 18 layers because I don't think I'm going to need all 20 pieces for this blade. So right now, I stretch my billet out. Once I'm comfortable with the shape of the blade and the bevels, I'm getting ready to quench. This is the most important step. Courage to quench. quench. It sounded like there was a crack, not seeing anything, which is very relieving. So I start working on this animal head pummel. This handle is a lot more detailed than any of the other handles he's already done. I'm running out of time. My handle's not pretty. It doesn't look nearly as good as I wanted. I'm now back to, I'm gonna be spending every minute and I'm gonna have a gap in my handle now. Jesse's out of the forge, doing a hammer set first before heading to the press. Jesse also got all of his drops drilled in. So after I have all these holes drilled, it's time to flatten out the billet and get the actual raindrop pattern. I've got my blade forged out pretty close. So I go over to the grinder and I begin roughing out the profile. The quench could not have gone better. I test it with a file, it skates like nobody's business. A bad looking handle could be the difference between me winning and me losing. I also need to get this animal head to look like an animal head because at this point it's just a block. Blaze Smith, turn off your machines, put down your tools, this competition is over. Good job, man. To test the strength and durability of the blades, Ben Abbott is going to be chopping onto these Roman busts. All right, Jesse, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes. Your edge is perfect, like it never saw that bust. My main concern is, is with the handle area. This distance, top and bottom, is just a little bit too small, so it's rubbing on my knuckle as I'm holding it. All right, Kurt, you know what's up. You ready for this? Does it matter? <laughs> Not really. All right, Kurt, first off, your edge held up great. The pattern you have on here is, is beautiful. It's a really nice raindrop pattern. It's got a gap in the middle, and the inside edges of that gap are sharp. They're sharp enough that they're rubbing pretty hard on my knuckle. All right, gladiators. This is the sharpness test, the animal hide slice. Jesse, you're up first. You ready for this? Of course. Your edge is razor sharp. It cuts so cleanly on this animal hide. Overall, sir, your weapon, you'll cut. 
Kurt, your turn. So you ready? Slice it up. Panel construction. If I do put my hand in there, my knuckle can get in there, and there's some sharp edges in there that can cut some skin. Overall, sir, your weapon. You will cut. Gentlemen, I would say that both of your corpses performed extremely well during our test, which means that our judges have a very difficult decision to make. Jesse, very, very well done. Now, Kurt, unfortunately, your time in this competition has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, Jesse, you knocked the leader off his pedestal. You are now the gladiator of the forge, and you're getting a check for $5,000. But do you have what it takes to get back in the Coliseum and get back in the battle? Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. It's fantastic. I just won five grand. I'm going to be doing my absolute hardest to keep winning, because that's what I came here to do.